I found home. I met a man who could have been any man, only he wasn't. What kind of absurdity makes one want to learn an obscure language? He became fluent in me for the sake of it, invested enough time to decipher my laughter dialects, pure release, started in warning, muddied with questions or cluttered with doubt. He studied every detail, convinced he was reviving a city we could call home, came alive accumulating vocabulary, connecting them like puzzle patterns. When he said, you are beautiful, it was deeper than high cheekbones, curved hips, soft moans, or compliments issued as one part of a bargain. If an acerbic tone caused him to stumble or consider walking away, he never did. Not really. How could he leave a home he worked so hard to restore? Questioning this and contemplating that, he stripped me down. Clothes, self-doubt, labels I held too close that weren't mine. At first, I fought the probing, the attention. I wasn't used to it. Didn't ask why he thought I was worth it. Couldn't challenge his conviction. Didn't want to. How could I throw a brick to the walls we had restored together when I'd begun to believe? Two. When I understood that being my own woman is a house I must build from scratch, must choose every brick, must reject most donations for. I started with what I knew. One morning, when a full moon tinted the ocean silver white, we marveled at its splendor. I caught him gazing at my face with the same awe. This isn't about him. But the way he loved me with no remorse was impressive. I wanted to love myself like that. I gave up the craft of busyness for its own sake. Courted silence until I wasn't afraid to be still, to stare at my own face, my own body, beyond skin, and be confronted with shame I'd accepted without question. All the things they said a real woman was that I wasn't. The shame I owned for wanting to opine without apology, though not for empty attention. To love my own deep voice. The roundness in my face that no diet would shed. When the borrowed and donated things became as tangible as a false wall, I pulled them down. I now know where the floorboards creak which doors are not good for access, which jarring paint I refuse to change, what it feels like to be at peace with myself, all of myself.